Hi, Larry, WD0AKX. Recently I went to power up my Drake TR4CW transceiver and it didn't power up. About the same time I heard a little pop sound and uh, shortly thereafter I could smell that I definitely let the smoke out of something, which uh, wasn't a good sign. So the problem is in the power supply. Now um, I already took the screws out here and we're gonna take a look inside the power supply I'm just gonna show you basically what the AC4 power supply looks like for the Drake TR4 series and I already took the bottom cover off there I'll show you a little closer here but basically I found a diode that had popped and um, not sure exactly why I have the feeling the capacitors are pretty old never been replaced and it's well overdue and they do dry up over time and go bad uh, that might have caused it it could be something in the radio that caused it hopefully not I need to check the radio I'm gonna replace uh, some caps in the radio too, some capacitors but uh, to start with we're gonna fix the, the power supply up well, here. I started searching online I started by searching for uh, Drake power supply repair and that type of thing and capacitors for Drake and found that there are some places available that I can get direct replacements made for this power supply so that was one route I could go just uh, buy the new capacitors then I stumbled across uh, this kit with a PC board and all the parts to basically rebuild the whole power supply like new basically reusing the same power transformer but everything else uh, pretty much gets replaced and it ends up like a brand new power supply with all new parts and even better components than the originals now this is uh, comes from the Heath kit shops where I found it and under sunlight energy systems they have uh, some Drake parts and repair uh, pages there on, in the Heath kit shop which was interesting so uh, Mike Bryce WB 8 uh, VGE puts this board out under sunlight energy systems so I decided to go with this kit and I'm gonna rebuild do a total rebuild on this power supply it should be like brand new when I get done so this is what the kit looks like when it arrives and I took it out of the box it's all packaged together basically you strip out the old power supply with uh, just about everything take remove and uh, replace it with this board it mounts in there off the power transformer on the side of the transformer and very important if you're thinking of working on a high voltage power supply like this an AC4 uh, very important that uh, you're familiar with high voltage circuitry because there's very high voltages in here several hundred volts and capacitors can store that voltage so even when it's not plugged in you could get a serious uh, injury or you could be killed very easily easily off these voltages so if you've never worked on high voltage stuff like this uh, don't even attempt it have uh, somebody a technician do it that's familiar with that type of thing now I'll show you what the power supply looks like up close just to get an idea and then I'm gonna put this kit together and I'm not gonna go over all the uh, kit building procedures and all that I'm just gonna build it up and put it in there and you can see what it's like when it's done I'll show you maybe just a few quick steps as I'm building that so basically this is the internal part of the power supply now this is unplugged and I did go ahead and discharge all the capacitors I made sure double and triple checked that I had discharged all the capacitors so that we're not dealing with any high voltages here now but that's what it looks like these are the uh, filter capacitors and that go bad over time this is a multi-section capacitor here now uh, it's hard to believe but modern capacitors you know much smaller capacitors do the same thing and even better than these older large size capacitors you gotta keep in mind this was built in 1976 it was built uh, brand new they were made in the 60s and 70s by Drake this is the bottom side so as per the kit instructions most of this stuff here is going to be removed now here's my diode that popped you can see separated there so that diode is bad 
and I'm not sure I haven't really checked everything in the area to see if there if more diodes are bad or not but I'm not going to worry about that since I have this replacement kit now but uh, that's what the power supply looks like before the kit is installed and we'll show you a little later when I'm done with the kit what it looks like but basically the kit will mount on a board off these screws on the power transformer and, and be mounted vertically it's fairly clean inside uh, it's all original since I purchased it new in 1976 late there's the diode that's popped just blew apart on me these are capacitors that you do never you never want to touch these when the circuit is live or before you discharge them now I uh, take a screwdriver from ground and short out all the capacitors to ground Make sure, and then measure it with volt, uh, voltmeter to make sure there's no voltage. And that's what the supply looks like now, untouched. Well, here's what the kit looks like out of the package. Looks like pretty high quality components there, like I was expecting. There's my diodes that I started to install. The leads, and I go ahead and solder these up. And next are the three 150K 3 watt resistors mounted a quarter inch above the board for added cooling. And I install the following resistors, and that completes all the resistors on the board and the diodes. Now these are electrolytic style capacitors, and they are polarity sensitive. You'll see this is a minus symbol here on that lead, so that's the negative side. They always have to be installed correctly. It's usually labeled on the board. You'll see the plus sign here. So the minus side has to go there. I completed installing the electrolytic cap, uh, capacitors. And one nice thing when this board was designed, you'll notice all the minus sides of the capacitors all face this direction. They face the same side of the board. So it just makes it easier to double check your installation of the capacitors, which is very nice. So there's a completed board that went uh, fairly quickly, very simple. So now the next step will be preparing the transformer to hold this board. Now according to the instructions, I need to go to the bottom side of the power supply here and start removing some components, starting with these diodes on the terminal strip. And I'll just go through and remove the components that it says here on the bottom side of the supply. I'm now up to the point where I did remove some of the capacitors and other devices from the bottom side and from up in here. These capacitors, these two will be remaining uh, for just for looks. They won't be used, but there's no need to take them out. Um, if I got the manual straight there, I just kind of read it through the first time. I think these will be staying. So now I mounted these standoffs on the transformer. This is what what comes with the kit, these standoffs, and they just screw right onto these screws that, on the ends of the screws that stick out of the transformer. And that's where this board is going to go, off the end there. Okay, now I finished mounting the board, and I finished hooking up all the wires to the board, to the underside. So I'll give you a close-up view of that, and I think um, I should be completed, and it'll be just on to the testing stage. So here's a close-up view of the board, how it looks in there. And these two capacitors stay. They're not used anymore. They just remain for looks, and, and there's just no use to take them out of there. Here's a view from the side. And here is the underside. This terminal strip was added, new, and wires were cut removed uh, or replaced to other locations and some of the parts here these two those these are the two caps that stay and some of these parts stay uh, there's a few of these that are used with the AC line coming in these are the components that were removed from the AC for power supply and overall it went very well uh, the the instructions were were uh, done up really nice, uh, very easy to follow, just like the Heath kit manuals. 
So I didn't have any problem really, any questions, everything went smoothly. I checked and double checked my wiring and everything seems to be okay. So I moved on to the testing phase here to check my voltages according to the instructions. So I hooked up uh, some test leads here to my voltmeter. The voltmeter has to be capable of measuring up to a thousand volts DC, which mine is. So I'm going to measure, there's uh, about three points to test to make sure everything is working normally. Now I happen to have a variac here so I can bring up my voltage slowly on the AC input line. So I'm going to use that and uh, just start to bring it up slowly. Just in case I have a short or something, I'll notice it uh, fairly quickly without uh, damaging something, hopefully. I do need to put a jumper in, as it shows on my AC4 connector here this connector goes to the radio and so if I put this jumper in like that then uh, the power supply should power right up as soon as I uh, apply AC input power. Okay I have my first uh, test lead hooked up to the orange wire and I should read between 650 and 750 volts when my AC input is up to normal and that's measuring from the chassis as ground to that test point. Turn my variac on. Voltage at, at zero right now. Start bringing it up slowly here. Check my current draw. Looks okay so far. Notice my voltage coming up on my DC voltmeter. Looking good. Coming up slowly here on the dial. Everything looking good at 80 volts. Everything looking normal. Let's keep going. I should have between 650 and 750 DC volts. And I do. Looks all right. 730 volts DC. I now moved over to the yellow wire and I should see at least 290 volts DC at this test point. I'm seeing about 298 volts. Looks looks okay. Moving over to the green wire. This is my bias control and um, well, this is the control here, the bias. You turn that, the voltage should uh, change. It's a negative voltage in reference to chassis. So I have that hooked up and I'm gonna vary my bias voltage here. Showing that it does vary between about minus 55 and minus 95 That volts. completes the testing phase so it looks like I can go ahead and repackage it. Put the uh, shield back on in the case, bottom and the top. And um, That'll complete the power supply project. The next step will be hooking it up to the radio itself and uh, adjusting the bias control uh, as per the manual for the radio. So the power supply is completed. So there we go. Thanks for watching. And I uh, hope the, the video just kind of shows you a little bit about uh, what a rebuild is like on a Drake AC4 power supply. It turned out very good and the instructions were good and seems to be a working power supply complete.